Project Blue Book, the U.S. Air Force's secret study on UFOs, collected over 12,000 reports in the 1950s and 1960s. The archives are online. But whether intentional or not, some just haven't been noticed. One such report comes from Afghanistan in early 1956. The USAF attaché in the country sent this telex to Wright-Patterson in Ohio. The headquarters for Blue Book, the base was also the nerve center of the Aerial Phenomena Branch, a secret unit that analyzed sightings. It begins by transmitting a strange message received from the governor of a mountainous province in northeast Afghanistan. He tells the officials a, quote, flying saucer of metal construction has landed there. It had a 15-meter circumference and small, thick glass windows around its edge. Why hasn't this seemingly Afghanistan's own Roswell become bigger news? We cover unique declassified files. Subscribe to join us. That same week, another telex was sent to Wright Pat. It detailed local reports of different shapes of flying saucers seen in northern Pakistan and central Afghanistan. Some were reported round, while others appeared square-like. A few hundred miles north, a provincial governor reported the landing of a craft at these remote coordinates, near the town of Aliabad. The craft was the width of a Volkswagen Beetle and reported as saucer-shaped. It had a metal construction, the file says, and thick glass windows. Most notably, it writes, Afghans attempting to transport to Kabul for Minister of Defense. Not known if they have a conveyance suitable for hauling. A U.S. recon flight was attempted to confirm the landed disk, but Blue Book has no follow-up papers. Maybe it's just a coincidence, but four days later, on January 28, 1956, the Afghan government agreed to terms with the Soviet Union for a $100 million loan to modernize its infrastructure. Within months, the USSR began giving military aid to the country. What could have happened to the craft? And what might its origins have been? A document shared by reporter George Knapp at the 1994 MUFON Symposium suggests the Soviets, and later Russia, ran a secret program to study UFOs and exploit their technology. Codenamed Thread 3, it had a goal of discovering non-traditional propelling agents and accompanying fields behind UFO-like craft. Russian officials believed some sightings may be, quote, strangers from other planets or newcomers from parallel worlds. It's never disclosed how far Russia got, and we don't know if they obtained any debris or intact craft. But one naturally wonders if Soviet involvement in Afghanistan, so soon after the reported landing in 1956, gave them access to the metallic saucer, assuming they didn't already know it was there. There's nothing more declassified to tell us what the U.S. response was, but the fact that the account was sent to Wright Patterson is an important clue. The base was also a recipient of this message from 1961, detailing UFOs over the neighboring country of Pakistan. Near Karachi, a source states three cigar-shaped objects were seen, pink in color, traveling in close formation. Their origin was never determined, but the sighting was categorized within Project Moondust. Moondust is a confirmed covert op carried out by the U.S. Air Force during the Cold War, with the intent of recovering crashed Soviet hardware. Though it remains an open question if debris of other origin was swept up too. One interesting example comes from a 1968 file showing a circular metal disc was found in a crater in Nepal. Moondust was involved in retrieval efforts, and the object was removed from the country by a redacted individual. After some time, the head of the Nepalese army urgently asked for it back, ASAP, though we aren't told what happened after. We do know Moondust tried to gather foreign technology throughout the 50s and 60s, though publicly available information doesn't tell us how foreign these objects were or if the Air Force ever determined where something like a metallic disc with windows was made. 
and how it ended up intact on a mountain in 1956. What can be proven, though, with documentation is that elements of the U.S. government were still interested in UFOs in the region three decades later. Take this memo, for example. In 1981, the U.S. Embassy in Pakistan forwarded information on close encounters in Afghanistan to the State Department. It writes, I'm convinced there is substance in many travelers' reports from Afghanistan the Red Army is using a type of very powerful, high-intensity light there. We have heard and reported accounts of this phenomenon since September. They described strange lights illuminating large portions, typically more than a quarter, of the Afghan sky. One such encounter was had by an NBC producer described as an accurate, careful observer. On a night in early 1981, he and his crew were in southeastern Afghanistan when they saw the light. The moment they became aware of it, it grew to full intensity. They never heard any rotor noise or motor. For the next 20 minutes, the light remained. The producer reported being unnerved by the intensity and magnitude and said it lasted far too long to be flares and did not drift like they do. Months earlier, a military photographer saw something similar. He noted a silent, cold, white light shaped like a half-sphere. Fifteen minutes went by, when suddenly the shape expanded dramatically while the intensity of the light within it diminished gradually to nothing. To this day, similar sightings continue to trickle in, though not through official declassification procedures. Anonymous message boards are filled with accounts of soldiers deployed near the Afghanistan-Pakistan border reporting impossibly bright, silent lights that illuminate large patches of sky. We are looking into this and may have something new to share next week. Like Roswell, New Mexico, this area of Afghanistan is steeped in its own UFO lore. Unlike Roswell, though, we may even have more documentation here. But for some reason, no one has really noticed it yet. Why do you think that is? Perhaps modern ufology is too US-centric. Or is there obfuscation happening here? And how far do you think Russia got on reverse engineering projects like Thread3? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Please share this with any friends and family you think might want to join us. Patreon supporters, Thank you so much, including Chuck in Florida. If you like what we do, consider joining them on Patreon and help us produce one new episode every week. Thank you again. See you next time.